Now we'll move on and talk about enthalpy. Enthalpy is the total kinetic and potential energy within a chemical system. Uh, now the concept of enthalpy is somewhat impractical on its own. It's hard to uh, measure the total kinetic energy and potential energy of a system at one point in time. Instead, we look at the change in enthalpy. We see that the change in enthalpy of the surrounding, it must be equal to the change in the chemical system. So that's where we use the formula delta H is equal to Q. Now Q will represent the water usually, uh, the change in the water, and delta H, that is the change in the uh, chemical reaction that's taking place. So calorimetry, that is uh, what we use to study uh, thermochemistry, and it's advantageous to have an isolated system that prevents mass and energy loss to an outside area, uh, outside of the area of study. Now this is an idealized system, and we use the calorimeter to approximate this idealized isolated system. So a calorimeter is an isolated system in which the chemical system, which is the reactants and the products, are being studied, and it's surrounded by a known quantity of liquid, which is generally water. Here's a picture of a simple uh, calorimeter that's caught, quite often used in high school or introductory chemistry. We've got two styrofoam cups. They're nestled in one another. We have a thermometer in there, and we can measure temperature changes that are taking place within the calorimeter. So as a chemical re reaction takes place, uh, the temperature of the water will either heat up or cool down, and this will indicate that an energy change has taken place. So a calorimeter allows us to understand the energy changes that are taking place, and since we know the mass of the chemical that we're using, it allows us to determine the molar ener energy change of the system. A formula that we'll often use when we're doing enthalpy problems is delta Hm equals delta Rh divided by N. Delta Hm, that is the molar enthalpy change. Uh, N is the moles of the chemical that we're reacting. And delta Rh, that is the enthalpy of the reaction. Now, we use the following subscripts to designate the type of reaction that is uh, taking place. So you can take a look at this table here. Um, it's just a reaction. We use R, combustion, C, formation reaction, F, and so on and so forth. Since the change in the energy of the chemical system is equal to the change in the thermal energy of the calorimeter, we can expand our equation so that N delta R H M is equal to M C delta T. This represents the changes in the calorimeter. This represents the change in the chemical system. So let's take a look at an example here. Hexane has a molar enthalpy of combustion of negative 4,163 kilojoules per mole. And if we have 220 grams of hexane being burned, we're asked to determine the enthalpy change. So our solution, what we're going to do is write down what we know. We know the molar enthalpy of combustion. That value is right here. Combustion is denoted by the subscript C and its molar. So we have the subscript M right here. N, we have to calculate that. We're told we we're given 220 grams of hexane. We need to calculate the molar mass of hexane. So we have six carbons, 14 hydrogens. So we will multiply those values together and we get the number of moles, which is 2.24 moles. We're asked for the molar or the enthalpy change. That's what we're looking for. We'll use our formula right here, substituting our values in uh, into the equation we figure out that the enthalpy change is negative 9.33 times 10 to the 3 joules. Now this is an exothermic reaction. Uh, combustion is always an exothermic process, so we have a negative sign out front. Uh, we can then put a box around our answer, uh, stating what, uh, showing what our answer is, or we could paraphrase our answer and say that uh, 9.33 times 10 to the negative uh, 10 to the 3 joules of energy is released when we have 220 grams of hexane, hexane being combusted. So let's take a look at another example. In this case, we have 10.65 grams of sodium chloride and it's being dissolved in 125 milliliters of water. And if the temperature changes from 20 degrees Celsius to 18.7 degrees Celsius, we're asked, asked to determine the change in molar enthalpy for the sodium chloride. So let's start off by writing down what we know. We know that the mass of the water is 125 grams because we have 125 milliliters, knowing that there is one gram per milliliter of water. And it's important to note that this mass, or the M term, that represents the water that is in the calorimeter. 
A common mistake is to add the mass of the water to the mass of the, the chemical reactant. Uh, and in this case, you don't do that at all. It's just the mass of the water. So our mass is 125 grams. Now for our chemical system, we need to determine the number of moles. So we have 10.65 grams of sodium chloride. We need to use the molar mass of sodium chloride to convert to moles, and we get 0 0.1822 moles. Our final temperature is 18.7, and our initial temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. So we see that the temperature has dropped. What are we looking for? We're looking for the molar enthalpy uh, of solution for sodium, chlor uh, sodium chloride. So that's what this formula right here, or this variable here, represents. So when doing these problems, it's often advantageous to think of heat gained and heat lost in our calorimeter. So we had our water in there, we added some sodium chloride, and we're seeing that the temperature of the water is decreasing. So what is losing uh, energy? That is the water. What is gaining the energy? This process of uh, dissolving. So that is our heat gain. So I'll write down our formula. And for these types of problems, like we saw before, it's sometimes advantageous to put these in absolute value signs. Then we don't have to worry about T final minus T initial and vice versa. So what are we solving for in this equation? We're looking for that enthalpy of solution, this variable right here. So we'll have to rearrange that equation, expand it out. And if we solve for a delta sol uh, hm, we get this formula right here. We'll substitute our values in, including the units, and we'll get our final answer. Now, if we were to not use our uh, uh, absolute value signs, you would see that this value right here would be a uh, negative because we have uh, the temperature decreasing. So in this case, we just disregard that. We just see this as a temperature change. And at the very end, we see this is an endothermic reaction. So if it's endothermic, our uh, molar enthalpy should be positive. So we can paraphrase our answer and say the molar enthalpy of solution is 3.74 times 10 to the 3 joules. Uh, it's endothermic because the surrounding water temperature is decreasing. Or alternatively, we can put a box around our answer. So let's take a look at our final example. And this is the molar enthalpy of neutralization for an acid and a base. And we have 50 milliliters of 1.0 mole per liter sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and it's being mixed with 50 milliliters of 1.00 mole per liter hydrochloric acid. The temperature of the solution increases by 3.45 degrees Celsius, and we're asked to determine the molar enthalpy of neutralization for the hydrochloric acid. So let's start off by writing down what we know. Uh, and the tricky part of these problems is that when we have an acid and a base being mixed, we uh, consider them to be comprised mostly of water. So if we have 50 milliliters of base, we consider that to be 50 milliliters or 50 grams of water, 50 milliliters of water. And for the hydrochloric acid, again, 50 milliliters of this, 50 grams, we add these two values together. So when you have a neutralization problem, we add the mass of the acid and the base together to figure out the mass of water in our solution. The temperature change in this case is 3.45 degrees Celsius. The number of moles is taking a look at the hydrochloric acid. We have 50 milliliters of it, which is 0 0.050 liters, and it's a one molar per liter solution. Multiplying those values together, we get 0 0.050 moles of hydrochloric acid and we're asked for the molar enthalpy of neutralization for the HCl. So again, let's think of heat loss and heat gain. In this case, the water is gaining uh, energy because we see that the temperature of the water is increasing uh, to 3.45 degrees Celsius as a result of the reaction. What is losing, uh, losing energy? That is the acid base uh, reaction. It's giving off energy. So we'll use the formula again and we'll keep it in absolute values again. Uh, we'll take that and rearrange for what we are looking for, and that is the molar enthalpy of neutralization. So dividing n by both sides, we substitute our values in, and we find that the molar enthalpy of neutralization for hydrochloric acid is negative 2.89 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. Now this is an exothermic reaction uh, because we see that the temperature is increasing, so we include the negative sign, we can paraphrase our answer and say that the molar enthalpy of neutralization for hydrochloric acid 
is negative 2.89 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole, or we can put a box around the answer. That's everything for this video. I hope you found it useful, and we'll see you on the next one.